So last year he was 16, youngest presenter ever, knows more about electricity and engineering, a lot of these old type of uh, devices than most um, seasoned uh, electrical engineers. And uh, he has been replicating quite a bit of Eric Dollard's work. Last year he presented on some of his replication of Eric Dollard's um, seismic research, uh, measuring like electrostatic signals from the ground and showing the graphs. and. Doing this with uh, relatively simple, um, you know, instruments and the wire and the meters and making it really, really simple for people. And he is a very prolific experimenter that charts and graphs and records like everything. And if you look at his website and uh, pretty much everything he does is not only built to replicate the results of a lot of these old... Uh, uh, devices from the late 1800s, early 1900s, but they also look like they came right out of that era. Um, he's a high school student, are you in uh, 11th grade? Yes. 11th grade right now down in California and uh, it's kind of funny because some of the uh, glomming episodes that Eric has had in the desert over the years, um, he would be in a car and his mom is on the lookout while uh, him and someone else is out there looking at what they can scavenge off of the poles and stuff and uh, his mom is a lookout driver. <laughs> so Griffin has a web, what's your uh, website address? So griffingbrock.com, and I believe there is a PayPal donate link on there. Yes. And so if you want to help support somebody who is one of the most brilliant young experimenters in this field, uh, come up and uh, donate cash, checks, money orders. Um, he puts it to use. Uh, what that money is intended for goes exactly to his experiments, and he's cranking out more experiments and getting uh, more results in a shorter period of time than most people that I know. Uh, on his website, griffingbrock.com, there is a PayPal link, so please do whatever you can to share that with people, let people know about Griffin, his website, and his work, and encourage them to donate uh, to him to help support his efforts. In this presentation, uh, he's going to be speaking on uh, Tesla's high-frequency illumination methods and apparatuses, along with some uh, demonstrations, so help me welcome Griffin Brock. Thank you. Okay, so over the course of this presentation, we'll be able to see the original bulbs and apparatuses that Nikola Tesla used, primarily in the later half of the Victorian era and early 20th century. Now, this is mainly on the, high, uh, the brush bulbs and wireless devices that he conceived of, which was primarily in opposition to the typical two-wire filament lamp or two-wire terminal lamp, which Edison and other contemporaries at that time had developed. This is the book, this is the actual text we will be referencing in any case. So this was actually written after a 1892 London lecture before the Institute of Electrical Engineers in London where Tesla gave an extensive research, actually a presentation on the research which he found in his uh, wireless brush bulbs and just wireless bulbs in general and the actual effects obtained with high potential rapidly alternating currents of high frequency and that the magnitude was so great that you could see luminous effects even without any lamp, but merely a spark or discharge electrode set up. It used to be done to a Colorado Springs specification, but it's a magnifying transmitter in such a way that we must use a secondary and primary in this case because the spark discharge and the actual discharge unit within this box is merely a power source, a transformer of low, fre uh, low frequency, still providing high potential and low current, a condenser setup and a spark, t uh, high tension discharge spark setup here. But since this does not create a frequency on itself, whereas we would have a transmitter or some type of frequency set device, we need a condenser, we need a secondary and primary configuration to generate or actually establish some type of frequency. And of course, subsequently creating a high tension, high potential, which is magnified to this magnifying coil, or actually tertiary coil, I should say. Now, if I have the tube right, we get a cancellation zone to occur between the coils. 
Now, if I actually move them, if we could see a spot which will form within the middle, it becomes very small. And this is really the point of where some of the interesting stuff occurs. Now, of course, we could have some very intense discharges emanating from this coil. Now, it's also safe to say that if you place your hand near it, not for long, but because of the RF intensity, you could get some very severe burns. But if you place your hand near the coil, one could feel this, one could feel this pressure, which actually builds up. Now, going back to the brush bulb, the actual bulb itself, it was fairly difficult to construct. Now, a glass blower was actually able to construct it, but this is the bulb. This is a brush bulb. And we can see that it's very sensitive. That's what Tesla states. It's a very sensitive bulb. Now, he also states to supply it with some type of screen or some type of inductive pickup tube, in this case, aluminum, which is quite thin but is able to slip over to this tube. And now we can see that the dark zone, it affects it. And the power is being increased and we're starting to obtain a whitish sky blue effect. And this is the close up. Now there is a point where the actual heat emanated and induced into the carbon is going to start an incandescent effect. Now right here, we can see the actual uh, tentacles starting to form. Tesla never noted this, but there are tentacles emanating from the carbon which are sticking to the glass and are fixed. So unlike, unlike a plasma ball, which you may find in a, as a, um, in a toy shop, these are not moving. They are fixed to the glass and are stuck as suction cups. Now here, this is actually a freeze frame where we see the carbon is in, um, reaching a point of incandescence. And of, uh, of course, the camera cannot capture it, but in up close, it replicates the sun in a way. And this was actually a setup I was using that you could obtain some very interesting fractal golden ratio discharges. This was actually a 1890s bulb which was broken, so thus the expense was unimaginably low. But even still, within this zone of cancellation, as the vacuum was depleting, we could see that there are these tentacles and corresponding lines which will align themselves with the zone of cancellation.